Our next caller is Micah from Florida. Hey, what's up, Micah? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, love the content. Just want to say thanks first. Um, so what I got going on is I've kind of run into a string of bad luck, uh, I guess you could say. I um, I got uh, got sick um, probably uh, six weeks ago. It wasn't COVID. It was some probably daycare bug. Um, recovered from that after 10 days, got back to exercising, and then immediately caught COVID. Oh. Uh, I caught COVID three weeks ago, mild symptoms, um, sub 100 fever, tons of exhaustion, no real respiratory issues, minor respiratory issues. Um, and that took me out for about, I'd say 10 give or take days. Um, and so now I'm three weeks, you know, post it, but I'm still going through this post COVID fatigue. And I'm at a point where I feel like I kind of need to push through it start exercising again. Um, but the problem of guys just is the fatigue weight feels so heavy, you know, cardiovascularly feel, everything just feels extra. Um, and I want to put together a plan, but I don't want to overdo it. But at the same time, I don't want to sell myself short. So I figured I'd reach out for your advice on to kind of how to get back to what I was doing prior. Well, welcome to the club. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good, right? good timing with this question since this is all on our mind. <laughs> totally. You know, <laughs> you know, Micah, when you're in a situation like this, uh, you have to weigh out the risks of underdoing it versus the risks of overdoing it, right? Exactly. So yeah. what are the risks of underdoing it? Well, you, you don't, I guess, progress as fast as you possibly could. What are the risks of overdoing it? way worse, right? You could yeah. really set yourself back. You could cause yourself injury, have to take a bunch of days off. So you really can't underdo it uh, is, would, would be the strategy that I would have. So I would go real easy. I mean, if you're doing nothing now, then I would mm -hmm. literally, you know, and, and if you're used to, uh, you know, on your question, it says here that you do six days a week of mountain biking before and look like you're real active. Yeah. I would go like for... A, like easy cruise on the bike and then come home okay. and just do that, you know, uh, every day or so and see how you feel. Okay. And then if you feel good after the first week of that, then I'd throw in one day a week of really light resistance training. Really your goal is just full range of motion and just practicing the lifts. And then okay. if that feels good, then you ramp up a little bit again and just take your time. The other thing is that, that, and this is, I'm not a doctor, so I want to say this ahead of time. Um, mm -hmm. but just for my own reading that some people post, uh, COVID just have this kind of lingering inflammation in their body and that they think that that could be what's contributing to some people having what they call long COVID. So okay. I would structure my nutrition and supplements around inflammation. So like fish oil, lots of fish oil. I would take that. I would, uh, I would, you know, e even reduce my carbohydrates a little bit that might help okay. with some, with some of that. Uh, a baby aspirin every day might be good. Uh, they recommend okay. that anyway, just to prevent, you know, the potential blood clotting that can happen and just pay attention to, you know, stuff that could help with inflammation and see if that makes a difference. But go going easier than you should is way better than going harder than you should is, is my whole point. With there, this. There's nothing wrong yeah. with just dipping your toe in the water a little bit right now. I know yeah. Doug is back to lifting. Sal is back to lifting. I don't think Andrew is. And yesterday, I literally yesterday I did I did five uh, five exercises one set and it was literally just to feel yeah. I just wanted to feel yeah, it right. out and then assess how I felt later on and uh, I was fine doing those I didn't obviously break a sweat I didn't even lift weight that was challenging weight for me I just wanted to see how I would feel afterwards definitely was uh, a little fatigued and tired later on in the day and so that's just yeah. m this the sign back to me that okay I'm not I'm definitely not ready to get after it um, today okay. I might do a, a handful of more exercises there's a, you know we, we have this idea all the time that if we if we're not sweating or we're not sore it's it's a, it's worthless or we're not really working yeah. out and it's that's so not true especially uh, in all of our situations right now where we're coming off something like this. So uh, and then I'm I'm walking at night. So I walked with Katrina for like a good half hour just with the dog and just went for an easy stroll. And so just ease yourself in and and uh, I would I would lean on the the easier, lighter, less work side. 
until you get this feeling of after you do a few of those exercises, you go, oh, wow, that's energizing me or making me feel good. And that would be my sign of, okay, mm -hmm. let me start to ramp up a little bit more volume or intensity. Yeah. Usually when I've taken time off and, you know, me not having it right now. So it's like, I'm not kind of in the same boat as, as the guys, but yeah. um, it is to really like reframe this and to address certain instabilities. Um, I, I usually tend to gravitate more towards unilateral training. Uh, this is why like in our map starter program, we sort of laid things out that really addressed a lot of, um, you know, getting the body back to, you know, reconnecting and, and addressing any type of imbalance. So, yeah. you know, to, to be able to kind of dive into that, because we get in kind of uh, momentum with our training a lot of times where we're just always trying to, per, you know, perpetually progress. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, using this as an opportunity to kind of address maybe some instability and things that could come back to kind of haunt you later as you're trying to really like work on your performance again, I think would be, you know, a great strategy. Yeah. So are the infamous cardio killers telling me I should probably ease in with some cardio first and, <laughs> well, and then, yeah, walking, yeah, and then progress walking, from there? Walking is not a bad yeah, idea. And also yeah. you, you wrote, you did a lot of mountain biking. I'm sure you enjoy yeah. it. So, and you know, yeah, yeah. look, here's the deal. You know, we talk, when we talk about cardio in the context that you're referring to, it's yeah. when we talk about people who are, you know, that's, that's all they do and they want I, to lose I, body I fat. Know. Yeah. So, but I say tongue in cheek, that's it. Perfect. Um, but someone like, so, you, so go ahead. Should I ease it? So you think just so ease into some cardio kind of increase the, um, intensity of it until I, or, or mix in maybe a, a day of cardio, a day off a day of very light resistance training. Yes. Strategy Absol would you implement? Yes, absolutely. Just what you just said. So I would okay. do a really light ride with my bike and then the day after or the day after that, then do really light, full range of motion, resistance okay. training. Give yourself like, you know, I mean, you, you, you yeah. figure you were sick for, you were sick before, then you got COVID. Give yourself like three, four weeks of slowly okay. ramping wow. things yeah. up. And muscle memory is a beautiful thing. You don't need to do much to get that to, yeah. to kick in. So. Let your body okay. do its thing. I really like Justin's advice too, because um, I'm kind of dabbling with this right now. Uh, I don't like putting it out on the podcast because I haven't fully committed yet in my head. But I, when this happens to me, where I have to kind of like reset and kind of start from scratch again, this is also always a. I always like to come back with kind of a new goal too, like that thing that I haven't been addressing. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. What like Justin was alluding to, like posture stuff and stability or. Yeah range of motion or that mobility, you know, thing that I should be doing that I know I'm not doing. And so I, I like to take this opportunity wow. of like a clean slate starting over and it's like, okay, you know what, there's that thing that I've been, you know, telling myself I need to be doing in the gym more. Like I'm going to start to implement that. Slow. And since I have to start so slow and gradual, this is a good time to start at square one with this kind of new goal. So it's a good time to do something like that right now. So I, and only, you know, what that probably is for yourself but not yeah. a bad idea to start to maybe implement that too. So maybe look, focus on some rotator cup instead of there, just jumping right into There chest. you go. Oh, yeah. exactly, exactly. My, my, exactly my point. You know you've got yeah. some rotator cup stuff. You know that's kind of tedious and boring probably to do, and you know, but you know yeah. you need to do it. It's like, you know what? You shouldn't be training super hard right now anyway, so why don't you do some of that stuff that you know you should have been doing for quite some time anyways and start putting yeah. a little energy and focus there. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. All right. Very cool. Thanks cool. for calling. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. People in a, uh, like a tangible example of you know, what we're talking about. So my typical workout, let's say my typical leg workout would usually consist of something like four or five sets of squats, uh, four or five sets of you know front squats. I might do some hips thrusts. I might throw in some stiff-legged deadlifts. And so that would be a total workout, right? So it'd probably be a combined, you know, 15 sets for my legs. Here's what I did yesterday for my legs. Three sets of walking lunges. I held 30 pound dumbbells, which for me is super light. Normally I'd put as much as 135 or 160 pounds on my back. So I held 30 pound dumbbells, three sets of walking lunges, three sets of stiff legged deadlifts with 30 pounds. That's it. So I did six sets total, super light. So just to give people an idea of just how easy you want to kind of ease yourself into it. And today I feel okay. I feel good. My legs feel good. I could tell it did a little bit of work on them and I'm not going to ramp up the volume until 
next week, but I'm not going to ramp it up to what I what I left at. Still, I'm going to give myself at least two. Or three <laughs> yeah, weeks. I was even <laughs> even weaker sauce than that. I mean, mm-hmm. I did yesterday. I did incline uh, incline bench press with like uh, 100 pounds, mm-hmm. and I, I did like 10 real slow controlled reps. I went over and did some tricep push downs. I did some uh, cable rows with like hardly any weight. I mean, literally, I did some just re- move. reverse. Yeah, it was literally just a move. It was like, let me see what happens when I lift some of this weight and just see how my body feels. And really, I'm looking to see how I felt later on. It's like, okay, let me do this stuff right now. And do I get that feeling yeah. of, oh, I, if I, it energized me for the rest of the day or did it make me feel fatigued and tired? And I actually felt some fatigue and tired. So to me, that's the sign that like, okay, you know, I'm definitely not ready to get after a workout. And so staying kind of in this, you know, one to two sets of exercises really, really light and just move the body right now is kind of where my focus is.